objective is to fully impregnate this enormous termite nest with clear epoxy, but we're not quite sure on the process yet, so we're going to try it first with this smaller termite nest. And we're going to try to use a vacuum chamber to suck the bubbles out and get the epoxy to flow into all the little channels. When selecting an epoxy for this project, we knew that we were going to need a product with very low viscosity and a long working time if we were going to have any chance at all of getting it to flow into the deepest channels of the nest without trapping air bubbles. West System is generally my go-to epoxy because it's so easy to use, but it has a consistency similar to honey, and in large volumes it has a strong exothermic reaction that greatly shortens the working time and generates a dangerous amount of heat. These are limiting factors of most epoxies, but we were able to find this product by SmoothOn called Epoxycast 690 that has a very low viscosity and a working time of roughly three hours. That's pretty cool, actually. And I feel like that works pretty well. Yeah, it actually got all of these little channels or have yeah. a, a coating on them. It's just the edges where, you know, it wouldn't have soaked all the way through. Yeah, where we sliced it, where, you know, through the solid sections, that's the parts that don't have any epoxy on them now. But other than that, it seems pretty well impregnated. Yeah. After seeing how well the Epoxycast 690 flows, we realized that using the vacuum chamber probably wasn't really necessary. But we still needed to find a way to direct the epoxy into the channels of the nest without making a bath big enough to submerge the entire thing. In the end, we devised a scheme using an AC vacuum pump, some PVC parts, and a contractor bag to force the epoxy into and around the nest. We floated the whole arrangement in a pot of water as a way to support the nest while we slowly rotated it in all directions. One of the advantages of doing a project like this in Louisiana is that everybody has a big ass crawfish pot. At this point, I'm gonna take us into the future and show you where we're heading because otherwise this is all just gonna get really confusing. Behold the termite table. Me and Rob are building this monstrosity for a juried art show and auction hosted by the Green Project. The requirements for this piece include that it be a functional piece of furniture built from at least 90% recycled or reclaimed materials. 
This table is in fact built entirely of things we already had in the shop or in our scrap pile, most of which used to be part of the building itself, including this enormous termite nest that we excavated from the floor of our bathroom. In a sense, this is material that has been recycled twice. First, the termites recycled one of my floor joists and made it into their home. Then I recycled their home and made it into a breakfast table. We've been struggling to get the grinding done on our welds and all of these little tight corners and we've struggled with this on a lot of our projects. So I finally went out and bought an electric die grinder and a variety of stones, flap wheels, and carbide burrs. We have a pneumatic die grinder, but it was a little bit anemic. I think mostly we just don't have a beefy enough air system for it, but I'm hoping that this will be a game changer. Yeah, that works pretty well.
So the idea is that we need to suspend our termite nest above this arrangement. And so we pulled out our wealth of plumbing parts and pieces, and we're working on making kind of a little Christmas tree of plumbing parts that is going to mate up with these copper pieces and tie into this.